Greetings, dear friends. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. We gather from around the world, coming together in a circle as a focused point of light within the fabric of the World Service Group. Together, we focus our intention for the common good, working with the cycles. And now we focus in the energy of the new moon uh, in Gemini. Bringing together our impressions from a two weeks meditation that we started at the full moon of Taurus, focusing on the topic of brotherhood. Through crisis to brotherhood, birthing the Christ within. So let us start our work. Over to you, Rebecca. Thank you, Alexander. Um, I just feel to read in a little piece that speaks about the spiritualizing of conversation. So it's short, I'll just read it. I feel it's really relevant to the way that we work together. And it says, no matter what size the group, if conversation can ensue that is focused on higher thinking, then spiritual beings can come into the images and pictures being created by the words that are in fact beyond the spoken words. And I think that speaks to our purpose of really connecting with the inner and higher levels as we try to bring through thoughts and ideas that will help us to support the common good. So I'll sound our purpose statement, our formulated purpose statement for this group work that we're doing, which is to support the manifestation of the spiritual plan for our planet through group meditation and conversation, which focuses the power of joint intention for the common well-being of humanity and Earth's overall planetary life, which enables the recognition and manifestation of spiritual principles in all fields of human life and activity, and which magnetizes thought forms of solution and supports practical actions that lead to the advancement of humanity. So in this very special month of Gemini, with our topic through crisis to brotherhood, birthing the Christ within, we're working in the festival of goodwill and we're working with the air element on the mutable cross. And we're using the mutable cross to explore topic areas related to harmonization and right relationships to support the prerequisite for the return of the Christ of developing a measure of peace or conditions that will lead to the growth of a measure of peace. 
So let us align with the energy of the mutable cross, with its energies that produce the constant flux and periodic change in time and space that will provide a field of adequate experience for the unfoldment of the Christ life and the Christ consciousness. The mutable cross with its four points. And upon this mutable cross, we align with the mutable sign of Gemini, which DK tells us produces the changes needed for the evolution of the Christ consciousness as it channels the great ray of love wisdom, expressing the love of deity, which underlies all that is in our universe. Let us hold this influence and atmosphere of Gemini in which we work in mind and heart as we come together today, beginning our group alignment through the naming circle. So over to you, Tracy, to lead us together in the naming circle. Thank you, Rebecca. As we begin our focus today in the new moon meditation, the naming circle unites our hearts across distance as we begin our alignment and bring ourselves fully into our group work. By uniting our hearts in this way, we begin naturally to work telepathically through our group mind. The key to this telepathic work is in the etheric alignment, which creates the group field and allows it to become both a receiving and transmitting agent for higher ideas and energies. We will begin by calling our names into the circle, starting with our organizers. And as your name is called, Please unmute yourself. Say your name and where you are calling in from. For example, Tracy Arbor calling in from Novi, Michigan, USA. And as we go through this, let us turn our attention to our hearts and the heart center of the group gathered today. As each one of us calls ourselves, into this circle. Alexander. Uh, hello, this is Alexander. And uh, Katja Kaufman. Calling in from Brooklyn, New York, United States. Welcome. Rebecca. Hello, this is Rebecca calling in from the east coast of Australia in Mapleton, Queensland. Welcome, Martha. Greetings, everyone. Martha calling in from Victoria, Canada. Welcome, Andrea. Hello, dear friends. This is Andrea calling from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in the United States. Welcome. Aneta. This is Aneta from Suru in Denmark. Welcome. Bernard. Bernard from uh, France near Strasbourg. 
welcome. Darcy. Greetings, everyone. This is Darcy calling in from Washington, D.C. area, United States. Welcome. Francis. Francis, we cannot hear you. We can feel your presence. Welcome, Francis. Francois? Um, bonjour, tout le monde. Uh, Francois Boulanger from uh, Toronto, Canada. Welcome. Fred? Brad uh, is uh, calling through the phone, so his microphone is not active, but he's calling from somewhere in the United States. Thank you. Welcome, Fred. Jillian. Hello, uh, this is Jillian from North Norfolk, UK. Welcome. Jeff. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. This is Jeff Ramsey and Lyle Ramsey from Buffalo Gap, Texas, USA. Welcome to all of you. Welcome. John. John Sedeby calling from Herman, Missouri, USA. Welcome. Josette. Hello, this is Josette from France, near Strasbourg. Welcome, Karen. Karen Gritska from Portland, Oregon, US. Welcome, Kit. Hello, this is Kit calling in from Washington, DC, USA. Welcome, Lynn. Hello, this is Lynn um, calling from the Columbus, Ohio area, USA. Welcome, welcome. Martine. Martine. Hello, this is Martine calling in from Chateauneau, Belgium. Welcome. Maureen. Maureen, you are unmuted, but we cannot hear you. There were some problems with audio. Welcome, Maureen. Michael. Aloha, everyone. This is Michael calling in from beautiful Hawaii. Welcome. Ruth. Hello, everyone. This is Ruth. I'm calling in from Corvallis, Oregon. United States. Welcome, Tina. Hello, this is Tina Hutchings from Denver, Colorado. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, everyone. Now that we are linked together as a group, let us share a few moments in silence to align forming a triangle between Shambhala, the hierarchy, and humanity. May our efforts be of the highest vibration in selfless service for our purpose.
Thank you, friends. Thank you, Tracy. In this cycle, we've been holding the topic of brotherhood, how humanity can make its way from crisis of separation to unity consciousness. So we open now the uh, our space to share any impressions that came to us through this two weeks of meditation. And um, some of the thoughts we already shared at the quarter moon meetings a few days ago, and some of them uh, are at the community impressions board that you can see the link in the chat. Um, we invite you to continue using this uh, uh, impressions board to continue sharing uh, your thoughts even after this meeting today. As we share, let us try to relate our impressions to spiritual laws and principles, thus anchoring our impressions in, in higher reality. And as we listen to each other, let's hear the note of each other and note of our group, allowing space in our group heart for impressions to land and be qualified by the group energy. To help us in the process of sharing, I um, uh, posted here on the screen the questions that were uh, offered for our reflection during the full moon meditation and in the uh, following days. So if they can help in your sharing, please, uh, they will stay in the uh, screen and I think I mentioned everything, Rebecca, Tracy. If I forgot anything, please add. Otherwise, we are opening our group space to share. <clears throat> from the community impressions board was offered I saw many groups of pilgrims walking toward <clears throat> a central location perhaps toward a mountain some were laughing some were dancing some were singing they seemed to be gathering people and as they did so some whom were approaching needed help, some needed food, some needed assurance. An energy of light radiated from these groups. It seemed as though the needs were met from the light rather than the pilgrims. The needs being met were on an etheric level. The pilgrims were learning to work with light.
Thank you, Martha. That's such a beautiful opening thought for us. Um, if we can focus in, in that way and see the light in the world and in each other, um, that seems like a very important foundation for us to be able to move forward and solve the problems and calls us to our disciplines to cultivate the light and purify our light so that we can shine it and channel it. Thank you. Um, when two people or two groups or two countries are at loggerheads and can't get on, it is sometimes a crisis that can ultimately bring them together. And uh, I think uh, that's one reason for crises. Thank you. Hi, this is Michael. Uh, there seems to be pain and suffering uh, often associated with crisis. Uh, and from a personality perspective, uh, that may be a reason for avoiding crisis. However, crisis is an effect that we often don't look for the cause for from and that effect of crisis can be a point of great learning and from that standpoint we should not avoid crisis when we meditate we can begin to see crisis for what it truly is. And through that meditation, formulate an action plan of becoming a radiating center or force of good. Simple things like directing thoughts of love to others, whether we agree with them or not. Um, simple things like trying to be a point in the world where we elicit smiles. Just simple things that make the world a better place. Thank you. I see Andrea, have your hand up, Andrea. Please just unmute yourself. Yeah. It, when I think crisis, I think of the crises that we are constantly being exposed to as a global community through the technology, media, and I often sort of gnash my teeth because I see an enormous amount of fear that comes with the demonstration and the reporting of these crises and enabling us to witness these crises. But I also think that these crises give us an opportunity to be extremely empathetic and to open our hearts. Um, as we imagine and understand what others are dealing with and recognizing that on a very personal level. 
And it leads me to wonder whether fear opens our hearts in a dualistic way that is similar to how love opens our hearts. And the love that Christ brought to us through his suffering sacrifice maybe is a spark within all of our hearts that when we see the suffering that there is actually love that is being transferred heart to heart as well giving us that opportunity to birth the Christ within Bernard, for me, uh, the crisis is always uh, an opportunity and uh, an uh, invitation to uh, recognize uh, divine law behind. And uh, the crisis is always, for me, uh, an opportunity to uh, align with a higher frequency of uh, divine laws. Thank you. Something that comes to mind is the, the role of individuals as initiators in the experience of others. And so as someone has mentioned the the heart to heart interaction, um, often the soul or Christ force will flow through others to to get to us and through others, ex unique experiences come to us that serve as initiations and expansions of consciousness that otherwise wouldn't have been delivered if it wasn't through that other individual or um, other groups. And so, um, and, and so perhaps crises are the vehicles to bring these people, you know, different people together, um, the, the initiators and, and the initiated, and our receptivity to um, interacting with others and participating in group projects or um, being of service perhaps positions us in places to either be initiated or to initiate others, um, often unknowingly. Thank you. I saw a post today, which I think is relevant to this, which said that um, if there have been problems in previous past lives, then eventually they must be worked out and they can re-arise re in a future life when two people incarnate together. So um, a crisis must ultimately be worked out then if that is correct um it's interesting because i was thinking about conflict and crisis how they relate to one another and uh, then uh, the underlying conflict grows and at some point it manifests through crisis so um 
that means the duality of the conflict, the op opposing sides are mature to be recognized, right? And then we have a crisis. And um, I always also, almost always thought the same thing, like you said, Bernard, that the crisis is always an opportunity. And then I just, um, the thought came to mind that it, uh, it is an opportunity, but it depends if there is um, some presence of the um, force or energy that is skillful enough to guide that opportunity. Um, so the response to crisis, and you know, the thought is reveals the level of our preparation. So if we have enough of skill to work with it, it will be an opportunity. If there is there is not enough skill to deal with it, then it might be next incarnation or next incarnation of this situation, not necessarily human incarnation, but the next level. So to shift from a level to level from conflict to harmony, uh, we do require the skill to, to shift a level up to the different perspective. And I think that is the growth of brotherhood because then in that crisis you you know one can clearly see who is your help in that who is your guide rather than help who will be there and uh what seems and what actually is there because there are two different things yeah so those are thoughts. An interesting synchronicity. Um, this morning, I was reading Letters of Helena Rorick, um, book two. And while well, reading it, I, it didn't come to mind, but I, I was thinking as, as um, Katya was mentioning the um, intelligence of the energy, bringing the right people to the right places. And it dropped in that perhaps it's not only um, brothers per se, but then enemies. And this um, this passage came to mind um, from Letters of Helena Rorick, book two. One even comes across praise for the enemies because no one but they can invoke so well our hidden abilities and qualities. And so they have been called Christ cauterizers. Or in ancient days, many diseases were treated by cauterization. End quote. So in this in this way, the right people in the right places, uh, or the right right people coming together at the right places in the right time. Um, ag again, it sounds like we should consider the blessings even beyond the good, but the the enemies and the crises that show up in our lives, and that they allow that up leveling of, of sorts, um, according to this passage. Thank you. Yeah, just um, responding to these ideas um, and this idea of being prepared to respond to crisis in a in a way that's fruitful or that allows the crisis to mature to the next level um, and bring something new. Um, I was just thinking of um, Katia's suggestion of skill, being able to deal with 
with the situations with skill. Um, and I'm sort of having these thoughts that skill is like um, an outcome of preparedness and it's really our consciousness that we need to prepare so that we can recognize what's happening and um, yeah, what, what seems and what actually is to be able to separate those, those things or to see through the glamour. Um, it's, it seems even more than a skill or deeper than a skill. It seems like a, a level of consciousness that or a quality of consciousness and awakeness that um, we need to have developed to be and, and need to focus on developing and to be able to respond to crisis in a way that brings the Christing. And that's the other thing that's really come present for me as we've spoken about this, the, the similarity between the word Christ and crisis. And, and the crisis of the crucifixion, um, it just seems so relevant to what we're talking about. So as we're building this conversation, I can see how our group work actually brings about brings us closer to at least the birthing of the Christ in that when we go back to some of the earlier statements as crisis as uh, opening a channel for maybe a healthy quality of fear that increases respect or humility deep listening or uh, that when we listen to Helena's recommendation that we identify that part of the human condition is an invitation to become Christ cauterizers, I thought that was a wonderful expression. And in working on this thought about preparedness and skill, the skill to see the differences between appearances and reality, it brought to mind that law of the soul that we call repulse. Because repulse, as DK used it, is not used to reject or to run away from. It's far more about what was suggested here to see through, to discriminate be between appearances and to look into the essence that can be invitational at times to step up, and to step into right speech and harmlessness. It may be that what we're suggesting that it's through crisis we shift our own identities from simply being um, brothers and sisters in goodwill into being receivers and transmitters of the will to good and that we can look for impacts in the will to good. As someone mentioned how, how transforming smiles can be because it's an energetic exchange that is in itself an invitation to think better thoughts, to live in better relationships. Thank you.
I don't know. This is very. Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say it's a very interesting conversation going on, and it made me really kind of think about, um, you know, we create our own crises. Crisis just doesn't happen for us. I mean, it it's a result, as every as a lot of people were saying, it's a result of our actions, thoughts, deeds, whatever, and then we have to recognize it, and it's how we respond or react which got me to thinking, it's really interesting to maybe compare root races and crises, because crises has been around probably as long as mankind has been around, and how we have progressed through our evolution as, as a human being and humanity as a whole, how we've come through, through all these different root races and how we used to maybe in the third root race, fourth root race, beginning of the fifth root race, um, more had more of reaction than response. And I think we're coming to the point um, in humanity now where there is much more um, intelligence as far as just brain intelligence, um, you know, the, the, higher manas, but not just the mental higher man manas. And uh, I've been contemplating a lot about the just manas and higher manas and how we're reacting and responding today in the midst of conflict, in the midst of crisis, and how, how many people in humanity are grouping together at a higher note as opposed to, oh yeah, let's just go in there and, you know, tear the walls down as opposed to, no, let's think about this because tearing the walls down is going to cause major problems, major crises. It's not good for humanity, for other people. And I think we've come a long way. And I think crisis is a good, um, scale a good red you know that we can look and see where we're at um so just wanted to add that thank you i think that uh crisis is a great opportunity because uh it shows us the way and uh brotherhood is the uh, only way and the only means that is given to us to go through the crisis and uh, to become able to uh, live and practice brotherhood, we have to first recognize our divine uh, nature and origin. Thank you. I've been listening to everyone, and um, I think the only thing that's uh, in our speaking that I've that seems missing is the thought of intuition. I think if we turn to intuition, which uh, developing that, which puts us in contact with um, the light in in every life, um, that that could take us quite a long way. Um, also. I read um, in getting ready for this, um, um, DK said in um, Esoteric Astrology, uh, he says this, karma fulfills itself in relation to the form nature upon which it expends its energy, and that where there is a static condition and a quiescent attitude, the process moves but slowly. The life then within the form fails to experience the needed forceful awakening. Inevitably, then, there lies ahead a repetition of the process until the time comes when activity and response is evoked. This then leads to resistance to the apparent karmic necessity, and this brings about liberation. Only through resistance to evil can karma be brought to an end. 
The law of matter still governs in the three worlds of human experience, and fire by friction must burn up that which veils the steadily increasing brilliance of solar fire. Thank you. Thank you, Lian, and it would be great to know where you got it. Um, just to, as well as Esoteric that. Yeah? It's Esoteric Astrology, page 444. Mm -hmm. And uh, if John could uh, reference the, uh, uh, the letter that you quoted also, it would be wonderful. And. Um, It is, um, it's interesting to me because it almost comes to the point when uh, in, intu intuitive, I, I agree, but intuition and especially group intuition is a very different uh, way of um, processing in, in, uh, in, in an action that comes from uh, group intuition and intuition is very different from uh, the ones of understanding. The, 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 the level of that what I think what Rebecca was talking about the level of wholesomeness it's uh, the intuition is much a much greater inclusive uh, energy the result of you know working with them with a different level of development. And um, I also think that it is the, the dualities that the opposing sides that we call enemies, right? It is the those same energies and forces that share the moment of evolution. It's the, the actors of the evolutionary step that's being taken together. And um, that's why I think it is very benefit. It is beneficial to hold this point of observation, because then you see them as one, or ourselves as one, and can do that in, on the on the on the practical level, not just in theory or in in uh, higher planes, but also. In the fabric of our lives. Thank you, Katya. This is Zanetta. Um I was thinking about crisis and pain as some sort of um, thought forms that is standing in the way for uh, the higher energy to to flow through um, without problems and I'm thinking that when we are healing we are trying to lift our energy as high up as possible and then um, use our intuition or the higher energy to go through the pain or the subform that is standing in the way and um i'm i i'm not that um i i don't see what is happening but in in me i feel it like like uh, small um small um balloons that is popping somehow uh, that that the the thought forms that is popping in me in my body um in in different uh, um, um centers of me uh, when i i'm trying to heal myself I th I'm, I'm thinking that the, the crisis in, 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 in humanity is the same. We, we, are, we are focusing of, of 
the old thought forms that is um, standing in the way of um, the humanity's uh, future uh, higher energy and and uh, you, you uh, when we uh, as a humanity get um, are lifting our energy level then it is easier and easier for us to to heal these thought forms uh, as uh, popping balloons <laughs> this so I, I think that is what we are trying to in these um, groups um, uh, when we are meditating together all, all over the world. Um, that's just some thoughts. Thank you. I'm just thinking about um, what Lynn said about the um, opportunity of resistance to evil um, and and then this idea um, of the Kavankatya, the dualities that um, that the enemy is actually part of the same process, that these polarities are needed for the movement to happen really. Um, and that reminds me of Judas and Christ and the important role that Judas played in enabling the crisis and the ordeal that happened um, to bring a new stage of opportunity to humanity. Um, and I think part of that opportunity, as we know, we've been talking in all our groups a lot in the last few years and probably before that um, about the new quality of freedom um, that, that we're being called to now. And this is part of it that this choice be, between um, or this, uh, this opportunity to to resist evil and recognize evil. Um, and then this idea of healing and popping thought forms and um, just thinking about healing as the, the actual transmutation or redemption of, of what's evil um, to actually really see it and see its place and clarify and purify it because when you pop those bubbles the the muck comes out and then it's the opportunity for that cleansing and um, lifting up um, if we can get into that higher place where we can see that and know what we have to do to stay in that fire as the cleansing happens so then we have, in the end, the beautiful purified matter that's come through the fire. This is the nidda. I totally agree. And I think that what we call evil is um, thought forms that is going, old thought, thought forms that is going against evolution. Um, evil is a part of um, evolution in the way that it it is not uh, good for us if the evolution is going too fast. So you could say evil is old thought forms that is slowing us down, and and um, so that. Uh, we have to fight it, um, but it is also helping us in the way that we are not going too fast in our evolution uh, to to hurt ourselves, as if we get a, a Kundalini uh, uh, 
uh, too, too fast. It is not good for us. Uh, so I think evil is um, is the other side, or the enemy is the other side of the coin. It is it is old thought forms that is uh, working against evolution, and that we have to to heal and to to pop if you, uh, as as soon as we can, but. Um, um we are only able to do it as we lift our uh, energy level high enough uh, to uh, to do it in in a healthy way for us thank you i'd like to add to what rebecca and annette just said um and it just dawned on me it just came to me that Crisis is is a fantastic teacher and um, for humanity, and that I think where we're at in this day and age crisis, it teaches us to become observe the observer or observers. I think before it was more reaction, and now it's uh, you know responding via becoming the observer and lifting us to that next level where we're not in the emotion and we're in that we're standing outside of it and looking at it which is the next step for humanity anyways is to realize that we are the observers and that you know don't get caught up into the comma man manas and all that type of thing but actually step aside grow up step aside together as a group as an organism and realize what we are doing, what is our purpose and becoming observers of what we've created and what we need to change for the growth. Thank you. This is Annette. I'm thinking about a Saturn, the planet Saturn, and that it is um, known as uh, the Lord, uh, the, 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 the Lord of the Karma, but it is, it is also known as the Great Teacher, um, the Father figure, but the Great Teacher too. And I think that is um, speaking good in, in this relation. Thank you. I've heard William Meter speak about a technique that, um, or an idea that would uh, help us, I think, um, in, um, um, he talks about the um, old ideas, clinging to old ideas, um, as it was just stated, as being um, a good chunk of the evil here on earth and um, out of fear and so forth, just clinging to the past. And he, he suggests that the way to bridge um, is not to jump to the future but to stand in the middle be the observer as tracy said and find the eternal principle that it is in ideas find the that people express you find the eternal principle that's in that old idea the old thought form from the past and um bring that express that and help those clinging to it uh, come forward um, staying with the principle but letting the uh, past thought form go um i don't know exactly how to do that it's a it's quite a job i imagine but um that has always rung very true to me and um uh, we try to work with that uh, as a tool thanks again And just to add to that, um, what our purpose is to expand our consciousness. And, and that's kind of one of the main things because humanity is above uh, the lower kingdoms, but yet just, you know, middle ground, middle uh, with the higher kingdoms above us. But um, 
crisis allows us to expand our consciousness. Is the native humanity is uh, on the fourth ray, uh, and you can say that our job is to find harmony through conflict. So um, that is what we are trying to do in in a, um, all uh, crises until we get to the soul level where we have uh, the fifth ray. Um, so that is our job and we are doing exactly what we are, we are supposed to, trying to get away through crisis, uh, a ray uh, uh, to the higher um, golden light, uh, to the uh, higher place between the two points of opposites somehow. Thank you. Thank you, friends. Let us now take this richness of shared impressions to stay in silence in our group chalice. And as we prepare for the meditation that today Marta will lead us. Um, let us uh, take three minutes of silence and reflect on what we heard from each other and what resonated for us in this sharing. In the meditation that Martha will lead, there will be a moment where each of us will have an opportunity to offer a seed, seed thoughts to be put in a group chalice, to be magnetized through our focused intention of our group meditation to, and be radiated as a thought form to humanity. So think about what is the most resonant for you and to be expressed in one word, one phrase, or one sentence during the meditation.
Dear friends, in our spiritualized conversation, we have offered opportunity to give our resonant thoughts now, place them in the chalice, and recognize that group work is in itself a practice of brotherhood. So let us begin, and it probably is the most effective if we open our microphones and offer our chalice in whatever moment the spirit moves us. So let us begin. I would offer the word initiation. Thank you. Opportunity to serve. Rise is an evolutionary opportunity. We are loving observers witnessing the harmony being birthed through crisis. Opportunity to recognize our real nature. Surrender to our eyes self. All manifestations in every point of crises are symbolized by the ancient symbol of the point within the circle. Through intuition, we are able to contact the light center in all forms and humanity can cooperate and hasten the divine purpose. Humanity, an organism which expands its consciousness through crises by becoming the observer, then acting through the will of its brotherhood to create harmony on a higher level. Keeping our energy level high, we can help to heal old thought forms from within, like popping the bubbles, uh, popping the thought forms from within with energy, high energy. Thank you.
through crisis to observation and recognition of choice. Through Christ in crisis, recognition of brotherhood in freedom. together, we have formed not only the chalice, but also the force required for effective manifestation. It is a force met by the loving energy of the higher presence. And what we have spoken to is to see through pain, to see through the conflict that produces great suffering, to see the trajectory of evil being absorbed by the good. We have been through the first stage at Easter time, stage of resurrection, where in fact we have come to see our capacity to spiritualize our thinking without losing sight of the state of affairs in our current living. And then in the second phase, we have recognized humanity's capacity to use the light of wisdom offered by the Buddha during Wisak. Now, in this beginning expanding light of Gemini, we call forth on humanities for humanity on behalf of humanity expanded responsibility for transformation in divine law and order as someone mentioned in recognizing the Saturnian process of step by step, where humanity becomes an active disciple through silence and observation, sensitizes itself to the direct light of intuition, moving through inspiration, through intuition into illumination of the actual presence of the Christ here 
And in so doing, we walk in the shoes of Christ. In the chalice of distribution, we see humanity as one organism sensitized to the will to brotherhood, capacitated to heal all thought forms that lead to elevation. to engage in the loving opportunity to birth harmony, to recognize crisis as the opportunity to serve. It is an evolutionary opportunity. We see the Christ in crisis to brotherhood in freedom. We participate in humanity's elevation into the first initiation. We stand at the midway point of the mutable cross the mutable cross of change, of transmutation. We walk in the heart of Christ. We do not flee crisis. We see through it into its divine opportunity, its energetic impulse toward change. We stand in humanity recognizing the best of its own accomplishment, its dedication to turn away from reaction to creative response. We stand at the midway point between unawakened humanity and a humanity that recognizes its agency to collaborate with the Davic impulse toward light and love. We call upon each other to help each other dispel glamour, a, gla a humanity that releases all sense of otherness, that sees Ubuntu, I am because you are. We rejoice in group in the activity of unification into brotherhood. In group, we realize our strength to receive cosmic energies. Those energies that help us fuse the polar opposites through transcendent understanding. And in the chalice, our seed thoughts do become magnetized. They take on a new potency to live in the mind of Christ. Together, we stand in the fires of love in the golden light of consciousness, where we forge and galvanize in pure simplicity, in serene obedience, the divine idea out of the many one and translate it 
through the healing power of Mercury. And our soul sister Venus to translate the idea into practical manifestation. We celebrate humanity's achieving the practice of brotherhood. In brotherhood, we fulfill the plan on earth. We are apostles for the will to good, the wisdom of joy, and become instruments for the fulfillment of brotherhood. Let us rejoice in the presence of the incoming Christ. Over to you, Alex. Continue holding this meditative space of silence, magnetizing thought forms of solution, leading humanity through crisis to brotherhood.
And as we draw our work to a close today, let us sound that ancient prayer of brotherhood that was given to us by St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope, where there is darkness, light, where there is sadness, joy, for thy mercy and thy truth's sake. O oh, Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, in forgiving that we are forgiven, and in dying that we are born to eternal life. Oh. Thank you, friends. So we'll continue our experiment to learn, work as a group, learn to listen and hear each other, and learn working with our meditation to support the thought forms. So we'll continue this experiment. In the next phase, we invite those who are interested, and particularly those who are custodians of the purpose, to join for the quarter moon meeting to share and reflect what would be the topic for our next cycle, uh, working with the energy of cancer, as we prepare to work with energies of cancer later this month. Much gratitude, much love.